I'm going to show you this time how to create um, a nicely low poly fish model. Um, to be exact, uh, the ambient oscillated uh, blenny. Okay, so first we add a reference plane. Oops. Tab, rotate, nine. Uh, rotate, rotate, 90, right. Okay, so from the side we unwrap it and we go to Textured View and we uh, create an UV image editor and we open the image. Um, and we unwrap it again to adjust to the aspect and we make it face the left side and align it nicely okay move it a bit away from the middle and now add the second model Oh, so let's also just use a plane and reduce it to one vertex. Okay, so here you have this one. Um, now we are going to start by dragging an edge over here, extruding it and subdividing it in the middle and then moving it outward. So we can also add a mirror modifier right now and activate clipping okay so so I simply extrude this these two edges now backward here so now we have to keep in mind that this fish is really 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 small so we're not going to spend um, a lot of detail on it, so about 50 vertices, roughly, but really nothing more than that. Okay, um, so um, we're going to extrude the back fins. And here, tail fin. Fin. Okay. Now we don't have to subdivide it here. Okay. Um. Now we have to turn it on the wire so we can see properly. Okay. So now we have to look at it from the top for a bit and give it some thickness in the right amount at least. So we have um, a relatively thick head and we can go and add a little bit more detail here for the head so we can make, make that too. Uh, vertices here in, instead. Okay, and extrude it. And only extrude the top, perhaps. There we have. 
have it. Okay. And the inside of the mouth. Oh, we don't really even have to um, have it open, so we can simply close it here and extrude one edge there and that's really enough so there's really no need to spend uh, points on, on small details like this maybe we can subdivide it once here to make it a bit more rounded but really that's about it that's about all we we have to do uh, for such a small species. Okay, and we need um, the front fins here. Um, we're going to uh, take an edge. and simply extrude it oh wait, just I'll get rid of it and link it here to this one and bring it in the right place and it works okay now these fins are really wide so we're, we're going to spread them away from the middle and their, f um, their uh, widest at the base so we make sure to uh, replicate that as well. Okay, turn to solid so you can see it. And now you see we have um, spend 53 uh, points in total so that's relatively nice and it, it fits the size of the animal okay now we can uh, project it to um, bake the texture so we go we set it to shaded draw type again and project from view minus one. And now we simply make it match up here on the UV map. And we can get rid of this one. And we have to flip the normals. They were um, facing in the wrong direction. Okay, we use a 2D cursor as a reference point, it's easier to make it line up. And small changes so it fits. Okay. Now we can make some smaller adjustments just so it fits. Mm, okay, that doesn't look and um, the way I imagined it. Um we want uh, this edge to be right here. I'll pin it and bring it here, and then it kind of works out. Uh, 
Okay, uh, we're going to have to project it again because the UV, UV map has uh, changed quite a bit. And same procedure. So now the fin begins at a point where where it's supposed to begin. No, not, not completely. We can make a few more small edits here to bring it really there. Okay. But now it's fine. So we're going to uh, duplicate this. Now we can um, smoothen this here a bit. Okay. So now you see we, we have those artifacts here um, from the front or top because uh, those are projected UV coordinates. So we, we want to bake it onto unwrapped UV coordinates. Okay, so we make a copy of the model and unwrap it. First we have to unpin them and we have to create a new image. So let's say we use a five, uh, 512 to 256 and turn on UV test grid and now unwrap it and yeah uh, we can pack it we have to pack it manually so it looks uh, so it takes up more of the UV space sometimes the packing algorithm doesn't really work that well don't really can't really tell why, but uh, this is wrapped nicely now. Okay, um, so now we, we're going to save it because um, the baking might crash process. Um, okay, so first we have to add a material to, um, to the source. So add a UV texture and select the Blenny um, source image. And now we can uh, go to Bake, select it to Active, Textures, um, Mark in 32 and Quad Split A. And now save it again and select the source first and then the destination and then click bake and now we can try and it worked okay nice so we can now save this one as a bitmap file and go on I'm working I'm just editing the image a bit Okay, so I'm using a uh, Trask paint job instead of uh, Photoshop, um, but it's really easy. Um, you just have to know what to do. So we have to um, uh, clone over these areas a bit. So with a uh, low opacity, um, just to avoid having these uh, artifacts here. And we have to uh, get rid of, of the the uh, fin that we had here. So 
So we simply clone over all this stuff a few times. Okay. And now we can sharpen it a bit once more. Okay. And now we can use the magic wand and try to have it figure out the alpha on its own. So this works really nicely here because we have a relatively clean background. Okay, we still have some artifacts that we have to deal with manually, so a useful trick for that is using a, a really uh, uh, different color as a background and you can uh, easily spot the mistakes and then simply use a manual selection and get rid of them. So here these have to go. And then of course here we had the body oops over the fin. So we have to do it um manually. But it's still uh, relatively easy to do. Okay. Just a few seconds of work. Okay. Now here, also a little bit that we want to get rid of. Maybe this black here. Okay. Um here yeah, I don't know um where the alpha be begins because I didn't uh export the um UV map but um I I um you can somehow tell where it should start from the texture. Okay, now if we turn off the background and just save as a PNG, um, we can work with it um, without uh, going to a lossy format. Okay, so we replace the image and we have to turn on um, two side and clip alpha in the texture face properties and we get rid of uh, the bake source now and here we have our result so you can see it, it worked quite well we just have a slight problem here on the belly uh, that we, this is something we have to fix um, Okay, so the easiest way is just to um, export the UV um, layout and No, okay. And make it match the aspect ratio. Okay. So now we're just using the eraser tool to unerase these parts here behind and erase 
the stuff that goes here. It really works the same as when using the selection tool. It doesn't really matter which one you use as long as you do it. Okay. Now we can make a few more small texture fixes here. We have a few scratches in this area. And we can relatively easily get rid of them here as well. Okay, now we do some local sharpening just to give it some uniform look because up here it's relatively crisp but uh, down here not so much because we copied over it and sharpened it here a bit and yeah Preview it again. Okay, that looks nice. So now we're pretty much there. We just have to make it usable for for the game. Um, so the first thing that we want to do is um, make the texture nicely and save um, as a DDS file. Uh, so just um, do a little color correction here on the outside. I could of course also um, bake it again so I get those borders really best possible way but it doesn't really matter. You can also do it manually just quickly. Kind of just brightness and then um, roughly make the color match so we don't get those nasty um, zoom out artifacts because this is where they come from if we have borders that don't fit um, the color inside the UV map okay um, add a background and you can sign it if you want okay It's already 2015 now, so yeah, keep that in mind. <laughs> How time passes. Okay, so we can uh, save this one as a PGA file and uh, quickly create the alpha map. It's really easy because we already have uh, unwrapped, it, um, have removed the, the background. Save that as a bitmap. No. And open this one. TXT bitmap. And load in an alpha. And save as DDS DXT all three. Okay. Um, Lenny adult female. Okay. So now we just have to make the model usable. Uh, so we're going to import a BFB model. Um, and we can simply take the original Blenny. Oh, where is it? Okay, and there we have it. Oh yeah. Okay, so um, now what to do with 
this BFB file. It has quite a lot of things that we could use or we don't have to use. The first uh, thing that strikes the mind is um, this capsule, um, capsule collider, um, which is kind of out of place because it's um, attached to the BIP01 node and somehow the scripts don't like that. It, it works well if it's if it's attached to another node but somehow not on BIP01 so we, we simply keep it where it is. Okay, mm. now we, we go to uh, layer, layer number 6. This is where all the stuff is um, located so we have a lot group but we don't want to use it because our model is much more low poly uh, than the original anyway. So we get rid of it. And here we have lot 2 and lot 1 and lot 0. Okay, we, we need the model so only uh, get rid of the empty. Okay, and now we make our our model match the original one just really really roughly or well not not really roughly but it doesn't have to match all over just so we can copy the weights nicely now we have to parent it to the armature control P make parent to armature don't create groups and now we copy the weights Objects, scripts, bone weight, copy, quality 1, no X crossing, OK. Now we can get rid of the original one and quickly test the rig. Oops. Yeah, if it somehow moves appropriately, it's, it's fine. OK, we can adjust the fins manually just because they're really prominent here but usually for something that small it, it really doesn't make a difference okay and now we're going to um, assign the original material to to our model but uh, choose the new texture mm. yep but in the end we we wouldn't even have to do that because the texture name is, is the same and it doesn't really matter okay um but one thing that we want to do is um name name our material appropriately uh so we we take this name here and we name the material and we name the object and we name the mesh itself just so you can identify it uh, later on more easily if you ever have to make sense to do so it's not really re require, uh, we required but, but it makes makes stuff easier later on okay so that's done oh yeah one thing we have to uh, re or we should rename this uh, UV texture to layer number zero uh, just so the scripts know how to work with um, that one but it's not really neat because I think I, I built um, I included an exception that handles um, this kind of bad layer names um, oh yeah here here's the link to to this layer so the texture knows which UV layer is being used okay but um, now it's done and we can try to export it and we go blue fang model 
and we name it Lenny and save it. Uh, we want to keep the original normals and then oh one more thing um, of course the mirror modifier has to be applied before exporting okay now and that was it this will work uh, in game just fine. Um, it's it's the same procedure with any animal, um, unless you want to to add blinking, for example. Then you have to uh, create an additional UV layer here and assign a second texture for the blinking. But in the in the end, um, it all stays the same, more or less.